Are you stuck for big ideas for primary geography teaching resources? Well, hopefully Resource Review can come to the rescue because today we're looking at three colossal resources. A large inflatable globe, a larger book on Norway, and an even larger OS map and aerial photograph. Our subject expert and panel will be discussing these resources here on Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is our subject expert, Paula Richardson. Paula is an educational writer and geography advisor to schools. Joining Paula, we've got Colin Hinson, a freelance educational writer, and Alan Mills from the Specialist Schools and Academies Trust. Well, Paula, let's begin with your first resource, the inflatable globe. So what is so great about the globe? Well, it's a globe and it's big. Uh, it's a wonderful resource to have in schools. Uh, this particular one actually is suitable for both Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, and it follows up on the notion of place. The importance of place allows children to find various places in the world, and at a later stage, other gl globes can be used which look at the physical side of the environment. OK, is it up to date? Well, it's as up to date as much as globes can be. They're only as good as today. OK, thanks very much. Well, we didn't travel halfway around the world, but we we did travel to Strathmore School in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where head teacher Carol Arrowsmith is using the globe with a Key Stage 1 class. We've got a big new piece of apparatus in our school today, and this is it. Today I had um, a Year 1 class. They're a mixed ability class with some special needs children and some quite high achieving children as well. This is what we call an inflatable globe. And if I turn it round, you begin to see all the countries in the world. I was using a globe. We were identifying um, land mass and seas, and eventually we focused on Norway. We're going to find out about a country called Norway. I was trying to get across the idea of what do we use a globe for? You know, when is it useful? OK, so let's see if we can find out where Norway is on our globe. Willem, just see if you can come and find it for me. There's oh, lots you can do with it. it. It is a useful resource to have in a school and it's easy to use for the children to move around. The disadvantages are that it's quite a large resource to hold in front of a class of children and it's difficult for them to see specific countries. No, not quite there. Remember, it's got lots of wiggly bits down its coast. They're drawn to it, they're attracted to it. Children are fascinated by countries. They love geography at this age. I do think this inflatable um, globe is good value for money, and most schools could have probably afford several of them, um, whereas you know, a standard globe is certainly a lot more expensive than that. Um, and the sort of novelty value of it, you know, the fact that it's blown up, it does attract children to it. And I think once they got over the initial excitement at seeing something new and different, they would actually probably start to learn quite a lot from it, if the information was a little bit simpler. Well, Paula, by the end there, we saw the pupils really enjoying the globe. But can you expect five-year-olds to really recall the information that they see on it? Is it really going to help them learn primary geography? I think the important thing is that children from a very young age are exposed to the fact that there is a globe, that countries are marked on it, and as the teacher actually pointed out, they are drawn to it. And most of the value of this is going to be looking at places they read about in stories, they hear about in the news, and that come to their knowledge in other ways. Mm. Colin, what do you think? Are you a fan of this kind of resource? Uh, I thought it was great fun, you know, and you could see that the kids were really engaging with this, you know, and I think the reason they were engaging with it was because it's an inflatable globe, you know, it's not like the normal maps and globes that you get in the classroom, it's something different. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that the teacher has actually bought several for her school <laughs> because I get the feeling that these things probably won't last a great deal of time in the classroom, and that's my only sort of worry about this is it's fragile. Yeah, I mean, Alan, what about the robustness of a resource like this? Do you see it posing problems for schools? 
Well, she did say it was cheaper than buying a standard globe. I mean, I think the point about it is it's it's fascinating. I mean, it's 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 actually real, isn't it? I mean, I, I can't drag Mars away from it, actually. <laughs> the, the relationship between the various countries, it's worked really well. And the fact you can move it about and you can have a group of children passing it around, that's the sort of thing that really is interactive. I mean, forget about ICT interactivity. You can genuinely point to, you can measure distances, you can, you can do all the things you, that, that science teachers do with the different sizes of planets. It's a very practical resource. I mean, we'd love to be playing with it now, wouldn't Absolutely. we? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But what, what about the size of it? I mean, you can get other size, smaller ones, I've you seen. You can get smaller ones, you can get ones which show physical environment and so on. I think that actually the size of it is, is a good uh, thing to be because children will take care of it. It is something they're not going to step on. And I would say that this could probably go into the reading corner as well as something they can actually go and follow up on from the things that they've been doing already in the classroom. And to answer your original question, I think it's more robust than it looks, actually. I mean, we've been moving it about a lot. And I think it's a pretty robust bit of uh, resource. Well, give it to 30 children and we'll see if it's different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, thank you all very much. Now, let's move on to the second resource. We're continuing with the Norway theme because we have a large book here, Barnaby Bear Goes to Norway. So, Paula, why this book? Well, um, as we've already seen, that uh, places are a very important part in, in children's geography. Uh, and Barnaby can go anywhere, and most schools have got a Barnaby, um, an animal which goes to places, visits them, uh, and really makes the place come alive. And this is what this big book does. It's a big book, um, but it's also highly geographical, and it brings home Norway to children. OK, well, thank you very much. Let's go and see Barnaby in action. We went back to Strathmore School, where deputy head teacher Joanne New is introducing him to her class. So today, we're thinking about a very special bear. Put your hand up if you've seen Barnaby Bear before. The resource we're using today was the Barnaby Bear Going to Norway book. We use the book really just as a, as a stimulus for the discussion with the children and as a lead into the activity for packing the suitcase. So having a look at the front cover, looking at Barnaby Bear, how he was dressed, where he would be going, who is Barnaby Bear and do they know him? Barnaby Bear today, he needs some help. Do you think we could help him? We're going to have a look to see what Barnaby's put in his suitcase within the foundation stage it's knowledge and understanding so it was looking at the geography you know does anybody know Norway do they understand that it's a different country that would it be hot would it be cold and, and then to make the links across to to what you would wear to be able to make sure that you were dressed appropriately so there we go Barnaby we've packed your suitcase for you is that okay once the children had, had packed the suitcase the idea was was to lead on from that so that some groups would be thinking about what would Barnaby Bear put in the suitcases so using the resource from the back of the book and um, photocopying those and then the children and use that as a stimulus and, and an aid to writing. I like the book, probably not for the, the younger children within the school, um, just because there's so much text in there and the language is quite complicated within the book itself. The pictures are a good stimulus for discussion for the children, but I'd, I wouldn't use the, the book as a, as a whole resource in itself and read it through. You'd have to dip in and out to how you would use it. He found out that there was lots of mountains in Norway. He found out that these one, there was lots of mountains. You know, the Barnaby Bear books are a really useful way into some of the geographical skills that the children need. So in that sense, it's, not, it, it's a good resource. And the fact that it's got a bear in there for some of the younger children mean that they can relate to it. So Barnaby decided he needed to find out a little bit about Norway. The negative point about it is just the, the amount of text within it for the young children and how it reads really. There's, you know, there's quite a lot of language in there and um, you'd, have to, you'd have to use the resource to begin with um, and unpick some of the language within the resource, which is really how I used it today. Well, Paula, the teacher was clearly enthusiastic about using Barnaby, but is this book actually more about literacy for older pupils than geography for Key Stage 1? It's an interesting point. Literacy is a very major part of the primary curriculum. So what we try to do here is take bits of the literacy programme and actually try and learn geography and look at geographical skills through it. I mean, there's some stunning things in here. I mean, learning about the midnight sun and things like that, children can relate to immediately. They don't know exactly where it's happening, but they know um, about it and they begin to understand a little bit about the wonders of the world. Alan, what do you think about this particular book? 
the book's obviously very useful, but as always, it's the teacher that was the resource. And seeing what she did with a suitcase and a collection of bits and pieces was wonderful. And obviously that particular resource was perfect for what she was doing. She was able to illustrate the pictures. The point she made was that the text was too much of it. And actually, I think that's the major criticism I'd have. Some fantastic pictures, some of the text was almost irrelevant. Mm. And I felt the level of the text as well. I mean, quite clearly, although there's a lot of text, and the text that's there is at quite a high level. So it looks to me more like a teacher resource mm. rather than a pupil one. That's true, it's a good point you've picked up. Um, the text uh, allows the teacher, as you had said already, um, that this is very much a, a, an opportunity for a teacher to take the bits that they want to actually use and they can read it with the children if they want to as a big book. They can actually look at the text and one of the great things about this, put it into the reading corner and the children go and look at it and they will come to it at the level at which they actually approach it. Although Barnaby Bear is essentially for Key Stage 1, Make no mistake, Key Stage 2 are in there as well. OK, well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to the third resource, which is an OS map extract here, blown up and laminated, double-sided with an aerial photograph on the back. So, Paula, tell us more about Woolacum, a coastal study. Well, it's a wonderful resource. You don't have to have great mapping skills to be able to look at this and to be able to read the environment. And that's what I really, really like about the whole thing. Um, children can look at it, they're in there. There, in fact, is also a picture of the same place on the back of it, uh, and there are separate pictures. But it's a crawl around type of resource. So who is it aimed for? What age group? It's aimed for anybody in the primary school with whom you are developing skills about learning about the environment. And you can have five-year-olds looking at it. There's no reason why they can't begin to identify various things. And you can do a more integrated approach with older children. So anyone in the primary school who is ready for using it. Can I ask a very obvious question? Why have it double-sided? Wouldn't it be better to have the, the map and the aerial photo side by side to do direct comparisons. Sometimes life isn't fair. Um, we have in education to worry about, obviously, they've got to worry about the cost of things. Uh, and it is cost effective to have the picture on one side and the map on the other. OK, great. Final comments from the panel. What, what do you think, Colin, about this one? Uh, well, reading maps is always a, a, a different skill from reading words, isn't it? And uh, I think it's, it's very, very useful to have this, this sort of resource where you can have children clustering around it yeah. so that they're looking at, at what are essentially hieroglyphics, you know, what these symbols mean and so on and then connecting that in with the the aerial photograph I think is, is a nice one yeah. because it gives it a reality a map in a sense isn't a real place but put it with the mm -hmm. photo and it becomes real. Alan there are some teacher notes and ideas in the pack that accompanies it do you think this is going to appeal to teachers for primary geography? Yes but it needs to be used with other resources as always I mean the, the problems are the double side I mean obviously if you had a projected image you could do it all of it at the same time. If those images on the printed sheets could be projected, could be on a whiteboard, whatever. It's, it's, it's yet another example of how it's a good resource, but it's made brilliant by using other resources. OK. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Paula. Three very exciting resources for today's programme. Just to recap, we looked at Educational Inflatable Globe by Toyway. Then Barnaby Bear Goes to Norway from the Geographical Association. And finally, Woolacombe, a coastal study from Wild Goose. Well, for more information about any of the resources talked about today and to post your own comments about other resources for primary geography, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. If you want to email us, we're at resource review at teachers.tv. So I'd like to say a big thank you to our panel, to Paula, to Colin and to Alan. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.